So you wanna build a successful online business, but there's just so much content out there, you're struggling to piece it together and actually create a game plan for yourself. In this video, I'm gonna share the exact roadmap that I use to sell $25 million of random shit online. This is the same roadmap that you can follow to create your own online business and join the new rich. If you're new here, my name's Miles and I'm just a normal guy who figured out how to escape the rat race and start living life on my own terms. After slogging away at a dead end job for far too many years, I finally took the plunge, threw myself headfirst into the digital economy, started my own online business from nothing and eventually sold it for eight figures. So if you follow these 12 lessons correctly, they'll take you all the way through these three stages from zero to your first 100,000, from 100,000 to your first million, and finally from 1 million to your first 10 million. So without further ado, stage one, zero to 100,000 or the slowpoke stage. Before anything else, you need to lay the right foundation and start building your unique set of skills. The point of this phase isn't to get everything right, but it's to try and learn new things and experiment. You've just come into this brand new world of opportunity, but just like a little child or an unevolved Pokemon, you'll have to learn how to crawl before you can walk or run. So for many of you watching, this means you've got to get outside of your comfort zone and just start. I know it's cliche advice, but it's, it's cliche for a reason. Just start by selling something, anything. Trust me, until you start, you don't actually know what you need to learn. But the good news is this isn't school. If you pick the right starting point, it won't even feel like learning. Done right, it'll just be you exploring topics that you're genuinely interested in. If you don't believe me, just start by looking towards your own hobbies and unique interests. Anything that you can put a lot of time into without it feeling like work, because this is how you'll find your edge. For me, it was photography. When I was younger, I used to wanna to be a travel photographer. I loved to travel, I loved to take photos, and I it was sort of my escape from my university degree. But I was also a broke university student, meaning I couldn't afford a brand new DSLR at the time. Instead, I'd sit at my desk, I was refreshing eBay all day long, and I'd just wait for a good listing to appear. In the end, I found one, it was a Canon 40D. I bought it, I took it with me when I went backpacking to Europe over summer break. I used that camera, I abused it, I came home and I ended up selling it for 50 bucks more than I'd initially paid. This was a light bulb moment. Sure, I'd only made 50 bucks, but this was an important event which led me to my first ever attempt at entrepreneurship, flipping cameras. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but I was a bit of a gearhead and as someone who genuinely enjoyed the craft and the technical aspect of photography, that was fun enough that I could actually stick with it. Over time, I got a better and better feel for the market, which lenses were priced well, which were priced badly. And it also taught me a crucial aspect of selling online, which has served me really well ever since. You've got to make it pretty. I've learned that it doesn't matter whether you're running an eight figure business or you're just starting a side hustle for the first time, selling is all about packaging. It's how your product looks next to the other products around it. And this is true whether you're selling physical items, whether you're selling digital content, whether you're a SaaS developer or a restaurant owner. Good marketing helps you stand out, but great marketing means that you get to choose the price. So in my case, I realized the key to flipping cameras was all about creating nicer listings than what was already out there. If I just took better photos of the product with the cameras that I was buying and selling, then I'd get more sales. So once you find something that you'd like to sell, make sure you can nail the packaging. You can't compete in the digital space without that. Now alone, these three steps are probably not gonna make you rich, but you will have officially started your entrepreneurial journey and you'll be well on your way to making your first $100,000. Once you've developed your marketing skills, then you can start to push your boundaries. So flipping cameras didn't make me a millionaire like maybe I'd hoped, but it built my confidence. I made my first $20,000 this way and it taught me a lot. Retail arbitrage, the fundamentals of business, how to make money online. And most importantly, it taught me that I could make money selling random shit online. Again, this is why you've just got to start. I literally wouldn't be sitting here filming this video today if I hadn't started by flipping cameras all those years ago. You never know where that first attempt will lead you. In my case, it led to the next venture, an online car dealership. In case you haven't realized by now, growing as an entrepreneur means repeatedly stepping outside of your comfort zone. I didn't know anything about cars, but I took the skills and the four lessons that I'd learned from flipping cameras. Let's just recap them quickly. One, I decided to just start. Two, I found my unique edge. In this case, I was selling online versus an in-person car dealership. Three, I made it pretty by creating nicer listings with great photos. And four, I was willing to push my boundaries. In the end, my business partner and I made around about $100,000. But as it turns out, an online car dealership is a pretty sucky business. There was so much work that we had to do, going to the auctions, inspecting the cars, taking it to the mechanic, taking all the photos, dealing with customers. In the end, I didn't think it was worth it. I realized that sometimes quitting is necessary if the path that you're on isn't taking you to where you wanna go. And in my case, I desperately wanted to move on to bigger and better things. This led me to stage two, 100,000 to the first million dollars or the slow bro stage. So making my first 100K was all about putting myself out there and just experimenting. I didn't know it would work, but that was kind of the point. When you're in the slow poke stage, no one expects you to have everything figured out yet. And I think every entrepreneur has to go through this period. But if I wanted to go from 100K to a million, 
to evolve from Slowpoke to Slowbro, I knew that I'd need to be smarter about it all. So to create a business that would not only provide me with a good income, but also enable the lifestyle that I wanted to live, I had to get back to the drawing board and firstly create a vision. So at 26, I set the pretty audacious goal to have 1 million in net worth by the time I turned 30. And yeah, I know this is just an arbitrary number, but it was more about what that number signified to me at the time, freedom. It was the freedom to be able to do the things that I loved, the freedom to travel, the freedom to live abroad for the first time, to take care of my family if they needed it, to be able to provide for them and to actually do these things from a position of abundance. So my previous ventures had taught me a lot. Not only did I gain a better understanding of what I wanted to do, I also began to understand what I didn't want to do. For starters, I didn't want to be running around trying to flip cars every day. I wanted something that was hands-off, something I could do online and something that had a big enough market so that I'd be able to scale to my first million. But I knew that to get there, I'd have to set tangible targets. Around this time, I remembered a guy from my high school who'd seen some success by selling on Amazon. This seemed pretty crazy and out there at the time. I don't think Amazon even existed in Australia at that point, but the idea appealed to me a lot because it built on all of these skills that I'd already been developing, sourcing products, selling them online, creating high quality listings, finding customers, and so on. But unlike flipping things one by one, I knew that I'd have a much easier time scaling this if I could just find something that would work. So my initial goal was pretty small, but still exciting. It was five products, each making $25 a day. That's roughly 46,000 a year in profit. I knew I didn't need to have everything figured out right at the beginning, but I had to know where I was trying to get to. And that's where that vision of 1 million and financial freedom came in. So I didn't want to jump in with nothing but lofty expectations. And I don't think you should either. Instead, start with a humble, short-term and achievable goal and test quickly. Because in business, you never really know what the market will want. You can only guess. This means A, you have to test lots of different ideas and B, you have to accept that you probably won't succeed on your first try. In my case, rather than putting all of my eggs in one basket, I launched five products at once. The first product was kind of a dud, uh, it kind of failed. It was like this magnetic wall organizer, like what I had uh, something in my house at the time. So I found a supplier, but there were just a lot of issues from the get go. I couldn't get the color that I wanted. I received a sample, which was pretty poor quality. And then worst of all, I just didn't do any due diligence about if there was actually demand for this product in the first place. But hey, again, mistakes are inevitable. And some mistakes you only really have to make once to avoid repeating them again. So by the time I got to the fifth product, I found something that was actually flying off the shelves. So that gave me the confidence to go all in and double down because it's not easy to find things that work, especially on the internet where things are always changing very, very quickly. That's why when you find something that does work, you've got to figure out why it works and then double down on it. Doubling down is important because it teaches you to look for the points of leverage. This is the essence of the 80-20 rule. Some inputs are better than others. So find the better inputs and prioritize them. And that's why it's important to test quickly, to take as many bets as possible and then double down on the bets that work. And I quickly found that my bets were working. So by embracing this approach, my goal of 40 k per year became 40k per month and then 400k per month in less than two years. Pretty crazy. But the craziest part was my approach was simple. I just kept looking for products that were selling pretty well, but had ugly listings and I just made them look better, which was the same lesson that I learned back when I was flipping cameras in university. And it was through this that I really got started on Amazon and made my first million online. So what separates this second stage from all the struggles on the first part of the slowpoke journey to $100,000 is that now we have a scalable business. So whether I sold one cup a day or 100 cups a day, I never had to touch the product or run around chasing customers. I just had to manage the machine. However, like in the car dealership, I still still ran into the same problem of just working a lot more hours than I really wanted to. Now I was making great money, but I was also feeling really stressed. I was constantly checking the Amazon seller app. I knew that if something went wrong with a shipment or a listing, it was still me that was on the hook to fix it. Not to mention keeping up with all the changes that were always happening in the Amazon ecosystem. Remember everything in the online world moves quickly. So I thought, I can't keep going on like this. I needed to free up my time so that I could return my focus to the bigger picture. And this brings me to stage three, 1 million to 10 million the boss stage. So remember, you started as a humble slowpoke. You learned to experiment and try new things. You made your first $100,000 this way and you went from a crawl to a walk as you made your first million with a scalable business. But there's one more important transition that needs to happen to complete the process so that you can evolve into your final boss form. Once you're at this final stage, growing your business, now it's all about streamlining that workflow and delegating it out, either to virtual employees or increasingly to machines and software. To do this, you've got to build systems. I think the single biggest thing that led to me becoming a millionaire was a shift in my mindset. And the one book that was a real catalyst for this was The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. E-Myth is all about how to create a business that works without you and then avoid the classic business owner trap of just trying to juggle too many things at once. So according to Gerber, there are three roles in each business. Number one, the technician who creates the product and does the hands-on work. Number two, the manager who maintains order and consistency in the business. And number three, the entrepreneur who acts as the visionary steering the ship in the right direction. And until that point, I've been trying to do it all myself. 
Maybe I was the technician, maybe I was the manager. While it was working, it wasn't effective. If I stopped, the business stopped, whether in one day or in seven days or a month, it was gonna stop. So I realized that to take my time out of the equation, I'd have to bring somebody else on board and teach them the systems that they could follow, essentially train them to be me. But luckily, as Gerber writes, the system isn't something that you bring to the business, it's something you actually get from the process of building the business. And so through my few years working in it, I'd already built most of those systems out. So you do the same thing enough times and inevitably you create a process for how you do it. And at that point, you just need to teach or automate that process so that you can gain leverage. Gaining leverage is about finding the tools, the people or the capital to magnify your capabilities and output. And so for me, this really kicked off with Michael. Michael was a young guy I'd been speaking to on Reddit around my second year of selling on Amazon. At the time, he was earning about $4 an hour, but he already knew a lot about selling on Amazon. And after speaking with him a little bit, I could already see that there was just a lot of potential in us working together. So I took him on as an apprentice with the goal of him managing my brands. This was an incredibly important decision for me. By freeing up my hours with him doing my job, suddenly I could take on more of the entrepreneurial role while he handled the management of the company. This gave me the free time to diversify my income and explore other opportunities like this channel where I can share my knowledge and experience at scale. And that's the key, scalability. Throughout this entire process, I finally learned how to create a scalable business. The beautiful thing is that if you set this up right, a scalable business will keep on making more and more money for you. But it's not a quick process. I don't want you to get fooled by the online gurus who sell you the dream of quick, easy, passive income. I've learned that even just teaching your systems that already exist, it takes a lot longer than you expect it to, let alone actually building them out. So you gotta be patient. I had other businesses before I started selling on Amazon. I started flipping cameras all the way back in university. I ran an online car dealership for a little while. Before that, I'd spent years working as a mining engineer. None of my success happened overnight. Building a business is hard work and it takes time. Naval Ravikant says it like this, all returns in life, whether in wealth, relationships, or knowledge come from compound interest. And it really does take time for that interest to compound. But when those results do start to compound, it's pretty incredible. In the end, I sold about $15 million worth of cups to half a million customers around the world. And not only that, I built a business that I could sell. This is the real secret of the third stage going from 1 million to 10 million. The most valuable product that you'll ever sell is your business. The biggest payday for a business owner comes the day they exit and walk away. All in all, the journey of entrepreneurship is different for everyone. But as long as you keep learning and experimenting, you'll keep increasing your odds of success. And on that note, please remember to enjoy the journey. Again, this one might sound cliche as well, but if you're not careful, it'll be nothing but a blur when you look back. One thing I've learned is that it's way better to be a producer than a consumer. When I was building my business, I was too busy to really spend much of my money. But once I sold that business and walked away from it, suddenly I had all this free time and no direction. So I started spending a lot more money and I can confidently say that 90% of it was a complete waste. And it didn't bring me nearly as much joy as creating and producing for others. So please just enjoy that process. I'm not saying this to take away from the value that money does offer, but I also know that being rich extends far beyond the number in your bank account or whatever luxury items it is that you can afford. So sometimes enjoying the journey just means remembering the reason why you started in the first place and keeping that perspective fresh in your mind, especially when things do start to pick up. Because if you follow these 12 lessons, it's not a matter of if, but when. And with that, enjoy the roller coaster ride because believe me, it is a roller coaster. Just when I thought I had it all figured out, I managed to lose $10 million because of one simple mistake. If you wanna hear that crazy story and learn what the mistake was, make sure to click on this video right here and give it a watch now and I'll see you there.